And we're back for another Pico CTF challenge, this time client side again. Description, can you break into this super secure portal? We get a link and our hint is what is obfuscation? And we get this barbed wire, up armored website. When we inspect the source and we look at what's going on, we can see there's this big chunk of JavaScript down here that is, is pretty ugly looking in all honesty. And then we can see we have this form where we submit a credential, a password, and then we call verify. So the way I'm gonna approach this is, this is heavily obfuscated, meaning it's been compressed, it's been made uglier and more difficult to read. And so I'm gonna do a combination of dynamic and static analysis of this. And the way that I'm gonna do that is first I'm gonna save it. So I will download this locally because I don't know an easy way to fix things up in the browser. So I can pretty print and it gets a little nicer, but I can't actually make changes to things. If I try to type in here, it doesn't allow me to. And what I'd really like to do is I'd like to clean this up as much as possible so that I can understand what's going on. So in order to do so, I am going to use Docker and I'm gonna run a local web server. So what you see here is Docker is a, a containerization technology. So it's a nice way to get building blocks. Think of them like Lego blocks. So in this case, I want a web server. I'm gonna run it. I am gonna map it to port 80 locally. I'm gonna mount where I just downloaded this index.html into that container. And the container's name is HTTPD, so the Apache uh, web server. So I am going ahead with that. And we should be able to see it now on localhost, which is my local machine, 80. Hopefully, it may take a second. Perfect, we don't have the barbed wire, but that's okay. We have the, uh, the source and that's what mattered. And I am also going to open this up with Visual Studio so that I have some nice tools to inspect. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to format this document using Prettier. And that does a pretty good job. I'm pretty happy with that. So let's start looking at this. So we were talking about obfuscation. It's not just that it uh, contracts everything down to be very small, but it's also that it gives it these ugly names throughout. And it uses things like we have this array up here and we're gonna see this array is used a lot. It's used to get all these different methods that we use and characters and things like that. The best way to approach this is to, uh, to begin cleaning it up as best we can by looking at how things are used. So we know that verify is called on the submission of the form. We know that from down there. But let's start by looking at verify and let's just start to try to figure out what these uglier functions are. So this one seems to be used a lot, this uh, 4b5b, and it's this function here. Let's, let's just rename it for the time being, heavily used function. And we will, uh, I'll look quickly over just to make sure there aren't any bad matches, meaning things that should not be replaced, but this all looks good. So we've got a heavily used function and we pass, it seems like we always pass one parameter to it. I don't see any times when we pass two parameters. And as a matter of fact, when I look at the function definition, I see the first parameter being used. I don't see the second being used. So let's replace this with unused, just so that we know. And then let's call this guy param1. Oops, sorry, messed that up. And we wanna replace four occurrences, that's perfectly fine. And what we can see is it seems to be referencing this guy, 5a46, and that's the array. So let's, let's name this the array, and let's do some replacing on that. And we can see also it subtracts zero from param and then it uses it. So that's really, that's a useless operation. And it assigns what it gets from the array to this variable and then it just returns it. So we could just return this and it would be functionally identical. We've also learned this is just an array lookup is all this is. So let's change heavily used function to array lookup. Or, or what we could actually do instead is we could just call the array directly ourselves. Uh, I think that's a better idea, to be honest. So if we replaced heavily used function with a call directly to the array, that would be a nice simplification. And let's see, let's see if I can use a regular expression here to grab the rest of this. I'm thinking, thinking, thinking. So it seems to be, there's a quote, there's a zero, there's an X, there's uh, an integer, there's another quote. 
and then there is a curly. All right, so that matches. But the problem you're going to see is when we go to replace that, how do we get this value to, uh, to go down? So this 0x0, zero zero, how do we get that from here? I'll show you the problem quickly. You know, what, what do I do? Do I put a zero? Well, I can put a zero x zero and it would work for this case, but it won't work for the other cases. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to create a group, a capture group, and we are going to capture this portion, this uh, string portion, and we will put that using a percent dollar sign in the array. And so if you watch right here, I'm gonna replace one and you're gonna say, see it keeps the zero x zero. Well, I thought it would. Let's. Uh, okay, that was almost right. Let's see. What did we do wrong here? Oh, I see. I see. I have it misplaced. I needed to rearrange that. Now let's try it again. So we're on this one, and we're going to replace. All right. That seems to work. And it simplifies our code quite a bit. Now we understand what's going on. So is this even used anymore? I believe use function. No, it's not. All right, so we can delete it. Uh, and at this point, I think we've done a pretty good job of cleaning things up. So I'm going to save it, and we'll start. This was the static portion of our analysis. Now we're going to refresh this page. We're going to inspect the source. We'll expand it out, and we'll start doing the dynamic portion. So I'm going to set a breakpoint. Uh, let's see. I think I have to go into sources to do this. Yeah, I'm going to set a breakpoint, and I'm going to enter, please subscribe as my password and I'm gonna run verify and I'm gonna make this larger so you can see what's going on and I'm gonna interact with it via the console so we're in verify document is our entire document we have the array but the array with a string is for some reason undefined so let's let's investigate what's going on with that code what does it say undefined so what about the array? Well, it's an array, okay. And I, I'm not sure why they were using quotes or how it worked, but that seems to be wrong. So if we did the array zero, we get get element by ID, which would make sense. We wanna get the element by ID, that's the password, and then we would like to, if you looked at the next one, get the value of it. So I don't know what was going on. I'm not sure what failed in us bringing this over. But we are going to replace all these uses of the hex with instead uh, just the number. And again, we'll use the matching. We are going to just take over the number. So we'll make that the match group. And we will replace it. It looks like we're on 0x1 right now. So you can see this get replaced with a 1. The next one should be replaced with a 2, 3, 2, 2, 4, 2, uh, yeah, I'm going to go slowly through this just because I want to be sure that I don't break anything here and accidentally replace something I shouldn't. But that looked good. So I'm going to save. I'm going to refresh the page. I'll enter please sub again. And we'll try this again. And we'll see if now this works. And it seems to. So this gives get element by ID. And then we ask for, that's a method, document. And we call a method. Let me... Let me show you since this is obfuscated and I want you guys to understand. So we have get element by ID. That's a function. We could also refer to it in this way. We could use the uh, bracket notation and we get the same function. So that's what they're doing. And then they're passing into it pass because they want to get the pass element. And then they want the value. Let's see, so that is value, maybe? Yes, please sub. That's what's gonna happen there. So we'll step over and we can see check pass now becomes please sub. We define a split as four. And now what we're doing is we're doing check pass and we are getting the second element, so substring. And we're going from zero to, it looks like eight. And we're checking if it equals the third element of the array, which is pico, ctf, and then the curly. So, okay, now we know how this needs to begin, Pico CTF curly. So let's go ahead and let's grab that and let's put that in a new file, we'll call this scratch file. And I'd like to simplify this. So I know that the array two, this is always gonna end up being substring. 
So I would like to simplify things a little more. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say whenever you see this, the array 2, I want to replace that. We're going to turn off the regular expressions because we want to exactly match this. And we want to replace that with dot substring. And I know this is tedious, but you, you slowly begin to build up what the actual code is as you do this. So I'll replace all because it's all look good. And then it becomes a lot easier to read what's actually going on in your code. Oh, and I'm also going to bring over our built out string and perfect, perfect. Save it. That's okay. I refresh the page and we'll start doing this. We'll start doing the password that we know. So we know Pico CTF. So we should pass that. Okay. Awesome. Now we know from characters seven to nine, we want it to be the left curly and an N. So I think this needs to be an N and we'll see if we can update this. I think we can check pass plus equals N. Yeah. So now, I think we'll be able to pass this. We did. Uh, it's weird. It's weird that we bombed it. Oh, I see. I see. It was the way that it was presented to me. I didn't understand that it was already doing this check. No problem. Okay. So this is saying from uh, eight, I believe, out to 32. Yeah. We'll put a breakpoint and that'll be the next place that we look. So we'll try this again. Grab this. And now we're doing this check and I want to know, so I, I don't even have to figure this out in my head. I can just put this into the console or I can highlight over it and it'll tell me it's going from eight to 16 and it expects it to match this value. So from eight to 16 should be not this. And we will update our flag now check pass equals this guy. Uh, again, guys, this is called dynamic analysis. We're running it, we're making updates, we're interacting with it. And then we want to know from uh, three to six it should be OCT, which we already have, I think. So I think we're good here. Then we're doing another check and the check is on substring from 24 to 32. And that needs to match this. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to say, actually, that doesn't seem long enough, huh? Now we'll find out. We will find out. Uh, let's, let's try to piece together the remainder. So from six to B would be F colon not, which I think we have. So we're good on that one. Check substring 16 out to 24, it's going to be again, so these seem to be end to end right here. We will check on that in a minute once we look at this last guy. So C is decimal 12, I think, and this is 16. Let's verify that I'm correct. 12, yes, to 16 should be this. And, and we have a, a this. And if we look down here, we're at column 13, and we go to 17. So that seems like it matches. So let's put it all together here. Not this again. And then some miscellaneous stuff. Let's update our password and see if we pass. Password verified. Perfect. So let's submit it. And it worked. And I, I know this is painful and long, and you're going to cringe when I show you at the very top that I actually, humble brag here, uh, I put this together without doing the actual challenge, but the obfuscation tasks we're going to have later, I've seen get a lot harder. So you're going to need to understand how to do this. So it's good to be introduced to it many times. So I saw the Pico CTF at the top. I saw the, the curly. I saw this ending curly. And then there wasn't much more text in here. So I thought not this again, and then this value. And, and that turned out to be the solution, but it's better to know how to do it exhaustively and, and comprehensively. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. If it was, please like, subscribe, share, comment, hit the bell, all those good things. See you next time. Bye-bye.